Okay, name, year, and something that inspired you throughout 2022. I think you wanted to go first. Okay, so um, I'm Valeria is my name. Um, year, 1999. <laughs> right, that's the year I was born. Excellent. Uh, is that what you meant by year? I'm not uh, sure. Or, no. I'm not um, sure. Year in school. Year in school, oh, yes. Oh, okay, I see. Well, I'm currently learning um, how to make clothes, so I put school aside. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, something that has inspired me this year was honestly gratitude. I've hmm. learned how to implement mm. gratitude in my everyday, and it's something like I wake up feeling inspired just by like the way that a flower blooms or the way that a moon rises. Cool. You know, yeah, it's the little things throughout the day to day. Awesome. You guys could come back to me last. <laughs> Just okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Fairfax, and I've been in school 20 years because I'm still here, even though I'm no longer learning. I'm teaching, and uh, something that inspired me this year was. Probably my sister, who's had like a total roller coaster of a year, and seeing her just keep charging forward is very inspiring for me. Heck yeah. Uh, my name is Jacob. Um, I'm a second year at CSU CI. Okay. And something that inspires me and is my is my younger brother. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, he's just like, you know, he's had a hard time in the past with like um with school and stuff like that, but he's, but now he's starting to, he's, he started going to community college, so, and yeah, he's as far as we can. Nice. Yeah. Jake. Yeah, Jake, Jacob Weber. Okay. Call me. Valeria. 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 Yeah. Doctor. Fairfax. Doctor Fairfax. Like the really amazing fashion street guy. <laughs> <laughs> street work hub. Capital of Los Angeles. Right. Love it. Right. Um, welcome. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm Kale Cruz from YCSLA. So she's one of our panelists. <sighs> and the other two are coming upstairs soon in Winter Park. Cool. So they drove from LA. Right? Yeah. Sorry. I'm like speaking like. I'm on the, on the one ready day of the last like 90 or something, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. It, you you want to talk about climate strike? Yeah. yeah. Uh, LA. Cli- oh. Use climate strike. Yeah, climate strike. Oh, we were doing, we're con- doing a, 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 a connection oh, before sorry. content. No, yeah. I, I got here late. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, are you studying? Are you in school too? Uh, I am. I go to ELAC right now, but I just applied to the Nice. Cool. Did you apply to what? Uh, Cal State's. Oh, nice. Did you apply here? Did you apply here? Uh, they actually didn't have my major, oh. uh, which is we- which is okay. But what's your major? Uh, communications and PR. Oh, okay. So it's either here or Boston. Hmm. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So, so. Um, cool. What is something that inspired you in 2022? I don't know. Actually, really don't know. I like, <laughs> think about this all the time. Um, nothing yet has like come to mind. Okay. Do you want to come back to you? Sure. Yeah. Okay. We skipped you, my love. Okay. So my name is Evelyn. Um, I'm the administrative support coordinator for ESRM. Um, something that inspired me this year. Uh, uh, CI <laughs> working here. This is my first year here. So. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm Sean Anderson. Uh, uh, I'm the chair of the department uh, at the moment. Um, and something that inspired me, I'd say one thing that really inspired me was um, uh, I have a long-term project in New Orleans and um, uh, that where we use students to work on recovery of the area, both the, the human side of stuff and the natural side of stuff. Um, but for the last two years, we haven't been able to, or the previous two years hadn't been able to go because of obvious COVID reasons. And it was very sad. Uh, some of my friends there passed away. 
and um, some of the nonprofits we work with had to shutter and close because mm -hmm. of because of pandemic related things. Um, but when I was there, uh, some of our partners are still there kicking, and it was really inspiring to see how excited everybody was that we were um, not forgetting them and still being involved with them, and that uh, uh, how um, how grateful they were and how excited they were, and, and new ideas for us to work on these coming years, um, and uh, and and that was really uh, exciting to see folks that um, don't have a lot of material wealth or don't have a lot of um, sometimes options uh, to still not still be passionate and still be positive was really cool. Mm. These are people you've worked with for years. These are people that you've helped mm. to do this collaboration. Mm. Yeah. I'm Zach Adden. I'm glad back here. Um, so I've been in school six, seven years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working here. I've been in school for, yeah. Um, Something that inspired me in 2022 is kind of a morbid thought, but I think it's a beautiful thing, and that's uh, death. Uh, there were a lot of people close to me that passed, so I went to a lot of funerals um, rather suddenly, not like uh, grandparents like dying old age, I think. And the connection, and um, I don't know, just like appreciating what you have in life and, and doing that sort of thing, like it, it kind of brings that all to forefront of your brain when you start seeing people not have it anymore. Um, yeah, so I think death is inspiring in its own way. Completely. I'm Joanna Tavares. Let me say your name. Yes. Yeah. I'm Joanna Tavares. <laughs> I started teaching here uh, very recently. 2002 was such a big year. I think when I like sit down in my 80s in some porch somewhere, mm -hmm. I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, wow, 2022, that was a year to remember. Mm -hmm. um, it started really awful, you know, like 2021 was really awful. I really lost a lot of hope that we could get ourselves out of this climate mess when I, when, you know, 2021 ended with what we thought would be the complete destruction of what was once the Green New Deal. And so what inspired me was to see the youth activists, which are represented here today in this panel. Um, the Sunrise is the one that I'm most familiar with, and that's one that I am officially a part of, right into the chapter in the beach. Uh, but just seeing youth come out, right, like, and, and organize, and push for policy, and do things at all different levels, federal level, state level, international level, that for me was incredible. Um, and then when the, this big substitute for the Green New Deal passed in um, a few months ago, that was revolutionary. That was when I realized, I'm like, this is it. I, was, I had already, I was planning, to, I think you had, had you invited me yet? I think you had invited me and it was like within weeks this happened, and it really, I think I'm still wrapping my mind around of how that's going to affect our everyday lives, but it really puts us now in a position to reduce emissions by 50% by 2030, which until then we did not have a path for that, now we do. It's not a solution for everything, but it definitely created a path for us to move forward. So that was very inspiring. And it was this, it was, you know, it was you all, like it was youth like going to Congress, Sitting like in um, you know in front of like offices of politicians, picketing in front of the the marina where the yacht of Joe mentioned, <laughs> and the way he goes every day and picketing every single day. There was not one day for months since November. There was not one day that there wasn't a group of three or four youth members sitting in front of the entrance of the marina to say horrible words <laughs> <laughs> to him when he passed every day. But there was, there was that, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I love it. That for me. And then teaching here at the same time created this whole like new vision for the future, um, which I really needed. So yeah, sorry, I talk a lot. <laughs> Very inspired to be here and, and about the possibility of bringing cool, kind of connecting. Um, so my name is Grace. I am a fourth year at UCSB. Um, 
and something that inspired me, I went camping for the first time this past summer. Mm. And that inspired me. I just like, I want to be out in nature now. I saw my first shooting star, which was oh, incredible. Cool. And I shared it with two other people. So it was like, yeah, it was really incredible, like sharing that experience with like other people as well. Um, so yeah, that's what inspired me. Cool. What's your major? Oh, sociology. Sociology. Yeah. We went full circle? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, I have to. Um, hi, 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 hi. Hello, hello. Um, I'm Chris Lyric. I'm legally Christopher Welch. Um, I am a BFA3, Bachelor of Fine Arts third year at California Institute of the Arts. Um, I study music production and songwriting and, um, from a very experimental and conceptual like approach. Um, to, to music as a as like this theory based thing and this performance based thing as well. Um, what inspired me? A number of things, way too many things um, that feel like a mountain, um, but that don't feel like the burden of a mountain. Just feel mm. like I'm this caretaker of a mountain. Um, and that feels very warm. Um, but that said, what inspired me is my niece. This little baby girl, and I have nephews, they're great, they're great. <laughs> they're, 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 they're amazing, I love them to the death of me. But my niece um, eclipses them, no offense. Um, it's, I don't know, it was just something when she was born, and like usually parents get this feeling, like when, when their child is born, they're like, I'm gonna make the world your oyster. You will be a champion, then I will parade around the, the, the grandiose of the planet, and, and all the resources of the world will be yours at your fingertips. For me, it, it, was, it was exactly that, and I'm just her uncle. Um, I just said, you know what, yeah, my life needs to, my life needs to be something that she can look at and go, Okay, I can do because this, like this was done. I can do because I, I have this blueprint right in front of me that loves me just as much as my parents does. Um, so yeah, I gotta stop ending sentences. <laughs> and so yeah, and um, you know, and uh, yeah, we gotta stop doing that. I gotta stop doing that. Um, anyway. What's her name? Her name is Mila. Mila. She's amazing. She's probably on my Instagram story right now. Not mine, but she's probably on, on my sister-in-law's Instagram story right now. Um, she's, she's the most beautiful thing in the world, inside and out. Her character is, is just by far the most... Um, and you know, she's not, she's not a spoiled bat, brat. Or, or like she, she's definitely a spoiled brat, but she doesn't walk around the world with I'm a spoiled brat mentality. It's like, I know I'm spoiled, but I'm gonna use my spoiled to like spoil you back as well with my baby affection and my baby love. Um, and she does a great job. She does a great job at it. She's, I think she's one. Okay. No, no, actually she hasn't, had, no, she has, she has had birthdays. So she does walk. She's, she's two. She walks around. Yeah, she, yeah, she walks. She walks, she's amazing. I love her. I love her to the death of me, and then so. Um, your turn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, babies are cool. They are. I love them. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Rachel. I am a six-year PhD student at UCSB. I'm in wow. the Environmental Science School. Um, I, I come to hang out with Dr. Fairfax and her class that's around this time on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and I've been learning a lot about um, lesson planning and just yeah what it's like to be a teacher here so <laughs> I really enjoyed it and uh, we're talking about what inspired us in 2022 specifically yes. yes and just like any sort of inspiration anything it could be the cat crossed the road and it made me feel warm <laughs> <laughs> I have been uh, really active in the uh, strike that's currently happening at UCSB and so I feel like I could answer this question with like essays and like a huge page of inspirational people like recently um, but I won't do that and I will say that driving up here I was on the phone call with a friend she's a third year PhD at Bren 
um, and she's done a lot of organizing in climate change policy spaces, specifically for the UC and also with Sunrise Movement. And we started talking about how the labor movement needs to like intersect more with the climate movement and just like where we can fit that in with the broader, broader discussions happening on our campus as far as like um, paying graduate students more. So I don't know, I was really inspired so cool. just driving up here. I'm like, sweet, yeah, let's we do gotta it. Help. Yeah. <laughs> I'm striking at UCI too, and we got to talk about that, that intersectionality there, climate and labor. We, we were talking a little bit about that too, of how yeah. we, labor unions are coming back, right? And how that is part of this whole movement that is mm -hmm. happening. It is happening. We, maybe we're not paying attention to how it's coming from all those different areas. And so there is a chance here for us too. There's pockets so we, you, can, you can start to just have cross-pollination of ideas in conversation. Um, anyway. And then we need to talk for, there's a, you got, do you want to listen to NPR? Uh, is it required? What? <laughs> <laughs> the, there's a reporter, and not everything on NPR is you know, amazing, but uh, there's this guy called Adolfo Guzman Lopez, and he's the education reporter. Um, he, the first segment that I heard on the radio about the strikes was very shitty and I then wrote this really long long email to him saying that he did a very poor job nice right and then he replied and he replied and he said well these are very good points I want to follow up and then so now <laughs> um, we've been on this conversation for days now oh, we've wow. been okay. emails, and we're looking for people who want to um, Okay. Connect oh. with him and tell him what they think, so it's not just like me, like. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's Let's okay do with it. you, Let's go on I'll NPR. Yes, <laughs> yes. He writes for the, for the the NPR. In so Southern California Public Radio. Okay. Yes, KCC. yes, right. Yeah. And yeah. he has the the like they have the LA, LAist, which is the website mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they've been doing all the writing. So he has a series of articles now, okay. including that horrible first one that I had I'll to, have to go say check something it out. about. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, well, and I did not yet reach that connection with him, because mm. he's overwhelmed by me in general, as you know. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, baby steps, but maybe you could be the person to bring out to the attention that we do have things we are advocating for in this strike mm -hmm. that are motivated by climate action. Um, Right, so we are I, we are asking for funding for better pu public transportation, and not just funding for us. In the, I don't know what's going to end up being in the end of the bargaining, what survives or not. But the original proposal included the money that UC should invest money on public transportation in general, not just giving like bus passes, which is what we were getting in the end. Yeah, uh, and the e-bikes too. I think yeah. that's something. <laughs> the e-bikes, sure. <laughs> yeah. So. Thank you for bringing that up. That is inspiring. Yeah, too. yeah, and I think they came to an agreement on the transportation one. So they did. I yeah, mean, it, it varies by campus because everyone has different um, public transit. Um, but I think for sure, like postdocs and grad students in all campuses are going to get free public transportation passes, not free, but paid for public transit passes, and then like a three-year plan to improve the public transit. Okay. So it wasn't like what we asked for, but they're thinking about it more. Right. Yeah. What was the ask? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> there were there were lots of so this is the largest strike in a um, higher ed higher ed mm -hmm. ever right in history uh, in the U S yeah in the U S and um, the reason why it was possible to motivate enough nerds to come out <laughs> of their labs <laughs> and o overcome their social anxiety <laughs> to be out there picketing right. <laughs> was the fact that there were so many demands that could that's why many of us don't remember what exactly was that yeah. it was so long yeah. and it took more than I, I know that last year there was uh, an attempt to have a picket line and that didn't go because we didn't have enough people voting support of the, of the strike and then this year uh, we had this 98 percent uh, votes for, for a strike so very cool yes and now we have the railroad people on strike. Yeah. And the federal <laughs> government intervening in ways that are less than acceptable. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how that goes. So how's it been at UCSB with, all, with 
Um, as a UC undergrad, undergrad. With this stuff. Yeah, now. it's been really good. I love seeing like all of the union, like strong labor, like um, a lot of um, chalk on the sidewalks and stuff. And yeah, I just, it's been really inspiring to me. And just like how much the UC like, cause like before I went to community college and so I didn't really know the structure between um, professors at UC or just at a university, especially like um, research universities. So the people that make the connections with students are really the TAs. Mm. And so, yeah, they're getting paid like minuscule amounts for like the amount of work they do. Like they grade everything. And sometimes like classes have like t 12 TAs because the classes are like 500 people. So, yeah, they do a lot of work and I'm happy that they're out there picketing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the average pay for the graduate student in the UC system is $24,000 a year, right? And most places, the rent is never going to be less than $12,000 a year, mm -hmm. right? So um, most students are in this situation that you know, it's like rent burden. Um, and the, yeah, the main issue for us, I think, is not if that is a practical problem. There's a very practical problem, which is like how do you make ends meet? But of course, some people, many, many people, many Americans do that. They survive on very little money. But the problem, the main problem, I think, is the disconnect between the money that we bring into these schools, mm -hmm. right? Like the amount of work that we're actually doing, while a lot of money is actually not, um, is, is going in places that perhaps is not really aligned with the priorities of a public university. So. It, that disconnect, I think, for me, was one of the things that motivated me the most. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that to be the Hello, hello. 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 Hi. Hello. So, wow. our event is, um, I scheduled from one to three, because I really wanted to make sure that mo uh, we could cover many groups of students who had class, yeah. okay. right? So, my class will come in at two. Okay. And they're 20 students, and yeah. they know about you all, and they're coming with, you know, like, questions and all that stuff. But my idea was to have these, like, informal conversations to start this dialogue about possible collaborations. What are topics, you know, that this university here by um, my head, what are ways in which this u university could perhaps collaborate with some of the things that you're all working on? Mm -hmm. And vice versa, what are some of the things that we that are going on here that perhaps could be supported or informed or um, somehow benefit from that connection? So obviously Val is like someone who is here and she's not even a student here but came in because she's passionate about a topic that felt like it aligned with some of the expertise that you all bring. Um, and really that's kind of the goal is to create conversations that might not end today. Right, hello, so, yeah. hello. And, and we have two more people that just arrived. Maybe hi, well, three, yes. three people. <laughs> so what we could do maybe is introduce the two panelists that arrived, and or, or guests, and then we can talk a little bit about the different groups, what the groups do. Would that be a good way? So Sam. And uh, oh, Shikana. 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 Do you want to? Do you mind introducing yourselves and then uh, telling a little bit? We we did we did a whole round of what inspired us in 2022. Yes. That was super fun. Sorry. Sorry. You're like trying to find parking. Did you find parking? Yes. You find parking. We're good. We're good. So yeah, if you don't mind introducing yourselves, you can say something that inspired you in 2002, or if you want to jump right into the work that you do and tell us about that whatever you feel like doing that. Yeah, I can switch. Um, my name is Shekina, pronoun she, hers. Um, I was born and raised in San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, um, and I am the daughter of Filipino immigrants, and so really all of the work that I do is inspired by my parents and the community that raised me. Um, but I have been an organizer in the immigration movement, um, labor movement, and um, I do a lot of anti-trafficking work as well. Mm. Um, and as I was doing that work, it became really obvious that a core reason for a lot of these issues was climate and the climate crisis. Um, so for example, like a lot of our trafficking survivors 
in their narratives and statements that they send out, it usually starts with like, I was a farmer, but then my farm flooded and I couldn't afford anything. And that was like, not only where I got food from, but that's how we got money to survive. And so I had to move to the US and get a job that was just like really shitty. Um, and so uh, I think a lot of my work from that has stemmed into how do we make the climate movement more accessible to these frontline communities and really make it their movement. Um, and obviously not just for the Filipino community, but so many other communities that are frontline, but often not regarded in um, the EJ and CJ movement. Um, and then something that inspired me this year, uh, well, we were working on a campaign with uh, Kenneth Mahi in Los Angeles, and um, he uh, was one of like the big candidates who actually had an environmental justice platform. A lot of them did it. I know Sim helped write that um, platform as well, but he just won with the most votes ever in Los Angeles, Woo! City of Los Angeles, and a lot of his team was youth um, and Gen Z folks, so that's really exciting. Yeah, he was running for controller, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, Sim, he am, um, yeah, I'm a climate organizer, youth climate organizer from South LA, uh, and you know, I first got into this movement when I was maybe like 10 years old, because you know, living in South LA, we have, we're surrounded by oil fields, we're surrounded by freeways, and I lost my, my grandmother uh, to uh, cancer due to like environmental racism and pollution. And it really did strike a chord with me, and you know, since then I've always sort of struggled with climate anxiety, which is like really intense emotions around it, and you know, a sense of like, you know, impending doom, because when you're little, you don't have like a really good sense of like time, and so for me, like, it was happening immediately, it was happening overnight, but then also I saw the intensity and escalation of the climate movement all throughout, you know, the course of me growing up from a little kid into, you know, a grown man. And so, like, it's it's always in sort of influenced my work and it's um, it's been a driving factor of like, you know, why I organize and, and how I organize and like who I organize with. And so, you know, um, I think something that inspired me this year too was I think, you know, just watching a lot of other youth come into not just like organizing and activism, but understanding like the power of our voice and as a collective, you know, we have a lot of a lot of strength in this movement and, you know, I think this uh, last election was a testament to that, but like even before that, um, I think something that's kind of inspiring me is that, you know, the first bill that uh, we wrote was SB 1173, the Fossil Fuel Divestment Bill, and we had gotten divestment farther than any other organizing group has in 10 years because it was led by youth and we wrote the bill and so we carried it farther than it's ever been carried before and you know we had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with like these really powerful unions and labor trades that are say they're for working class people say they're for black and brown people but the core tenants you know it's a hierarchical conservative structure that's usually rooted in the white supremacy and so you know to go in toe-to-toe -to -toe with these, these organizations and then come on top like it was a testament to our power and it really did like set a fire in me to like really push even stronger the rest of the year too. Woo! Got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> you, so when we did the full circle, oh, I had to share what inspired me. And I mentioned that I'm inspired by you, right? So you can see how I get inspired when mm -hmm. I. And then we have uh, you. I, I know I haven't met you, but are you a student here? Yes, I'm a student. Would you mind if you don't have to, but if you want to introduce yourselves and um, tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh yeah. Hi, my name is Margaret. I'm an ESRM student. Um, I learned about the panel from my professor. Yay! <laughs> I was just super curious. I wanted to hear everybody's stories, and I just wanted to learn more. You yeah. know, excited. Very cool. Do you live around here? I do. I live in Oxnard. Born and raised in Oxnard. Oh, that's good. Nice meeting. I'm Joanna Tavares. I'm a new lecturer in the ESRM. So I'm, I'm meeting all these new students here today, which is a great way for me to also get familiarized with the faces and know who's here. Um, and yet, for those who are panelists here, this school is relatively small, uh, but this department is pretty amazing. And we have these students who are super uh, engaged and 
prepared and um, you said you like you got inspired by going camping the first time well these people these professors mm -hmm. take students to the islands the channel islands to do mm -hmm. these amazing adventurous scientific expeditions so, cool. so there's a lot of that that happens here and a lot of these Folks had to go and sleep. Have you gone yet to the islands? And not yet. Not yet. Semester. It's in your. It's spring. Spring. Yeah. spring. <laughs> I have to go. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was gonna. Ask let you, me know how to you apply. Mind talking a little bit about the program too, since we have. To, so it's 1:44. Like I said, my 20 students should be arriving uh, around two, uh, and we can take a little break, bathroom break, and then we'll move into more of a panel format because there okay. will be enough of them. My apologies. Um, no, no, <laughs> this is great because really I did not know what to expect. When I reserved the time, I wanted to make sure that, again, that we, we were able to serve students who had class at two, and it might not be my class. So this was perfect. Thank you so much. Would you mind telling uh, our guests a little bit about the program? Uh, yeah, sure, version is So when we um, created this program, we were trying to do something different, right? So we had this weird name. Um, and after we made the name, several other programs, uh, not, I don't think inspired by us, but just sort of along the same lines, sort of came up with the same idea, which is, um, so we're, we're a very interdisciplinary department, so Dr. Fairfax has sort of engineering, sort of physical science background. I'm, I'm mostly a um, marine biologist by training and stuff, and so, so we have different people from different backgrounds. And the idea was to sort of take some of the best part of environmental science, the rigor of measuring that pollutant in that water or whatever, and, and have that skill set, but also um, bring in the, the idea of resource management, which traditionally was always dudes, and traditionally sort of very macho dudes on the back of a horse or cutting down a tree or something, but nevertheless grounded in this idea of talking to people and community. And how do we decide how many deer to take out of here or how many fish or whatever? And it was more of a conversation, um, engaging with community type of thing, and try to combine those things together. So, so have the rigor of the science, but also have the interdisciplinarity so that students could um, <coughs> Not an expert economist or, or chemist or whatever, but they all, but they, you know, our students have to take some economics, they have to take some chemistry, they have to take some biology, so that when we talk about proposing solutions to things like climate crisis and stuff, the the stuff that's crafted is, is realistic. It isn't just like stop, no, don't do that. But it's like, hey, we understand these folks need to make a living. We understand that there's all these other things going on, and so. Um, so yeah, so that's the base of our program. So we are, the, there's a, a program on campus called um, Liberal Studies, which is really for um, students that want to be teachers. And that's that's a very interdisciplinary, but, but after that, we are the most, and certainly the sciences, we're the most interdisciplinary um, uh, program, and we're very proud of that. And so, uh, so um, we train students to, when they graduate, be ready to, to go do stuff. And so some, some majors, some disciplines, some place, people say, oh, you gotta go get a master's degree to make a difference or get a, a job that's really, you know, pays the rent or whatever. And we've tried to craft this so that we're very skills oriented. And so that when the students leave, they, they know GIS, they know um, how to do public opinion polling and, and, and things of that nature. So. How to survive in the wilderness? And how to survive in the wilderness? Yeah, so so we're also very field based, and so so like this this lab is our is our tech lab, and so we do a lot with robots, and we do a lot with water quality probes and things of that nature. Virtually none of this at the university. Well, the university provides us the building, but almost all these other things have come from a Dr. Fairfax, from mine, from other faculty's research grants, and so we use that as a as a way to sort of mainstream, mainline in technologies that can help. So in that room is a new fancy um, microplastic fingerprinting machine. Um, so we can identify microplastics as to you know, what, where they came from and that kind of stuff. And, and for example, the goal to get that is one, to train our students and to help, but, but also um, the best, the best um, case study of this, which is an, an effort that was done up in the San Francisco Bay, where they're looking at microplastics and sort of environmental justice and all kinds of aspects of that. But um, they were looking at this pollutant in water and this pollutant in soils and this pollutant in, in critters and things. And the research lab that was helping them eventually got to $4,000 a sample. And, and they're doing like multiple samples from multiple sites, multiple sites you know, every month. And that's just insanely expensive. So one of the reasons we got that machine is both to be able to do this science and everything, but also to train our students on the next generation and to be able to provide that service to local nonprofits, small water districts, 
folks that, so maybe we, we're hoping we can get it down to like 20 bucks a sample. So that still costs some money, but, but it's much more in the bandwidth of people that are, that are on the, the front lines trying to do stuff. Um, as opposed to, like if we're, I guess if we were super smart, supposedly we would tr charge four thousand dollars a sample for that, and make much money. But, but that's not our jam, right? Our jam is like, how can we make a difference? How can we help um, empower uh, our students so they can go out and, and contribute to these things, as opposed to just get angry about it? Yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So but maybe Emily wants to say something too. That, that, that was my be, take, but maybe she has. I was responding to an email. Okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So basically, okay. we're gonna we're gonna take a little break before two, so that at two we're gonna start. We already have some students from Principles of Sustainability who are here, and we have new students that are coming in to watch as well. Um, so the idea is to take a little break, but we're before we focus on the panelists, we're giving the panelists a little opportunity to learn more about the department and the school. And since I'm new, I know very little, so I'm learning too. <laughs> Um, yeah, Richard, do you want to say anything about the work you're doing? Or, uh, Emily, do you want to say something about the work you do? Or is that something that you would want to I know, share? beavers are awesome. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> I study them. They're climate heroes. Um, I'm always happy to talk to folks about that. And with that, talking to the media is also something that I've done a lot of working with journalists and things. So I'm happy to chat about what that looks like. So be beavers. She's talking about beavers. Were you in that like uh, Vice documentary that just came out about beavers? Yes. I did. Mean, I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> so how are beavers heroes? They slow down water and keep it on the landscape longer so that plants can have access to it during the hottest, driest parts of summer. And it makes that part of the landscape fireproof because it's too soggy. Ooh. Go beavers. I know, right? Go beavers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how about we take a little break? I know I need to use the restroom. Everybody can get water and use the restroom, and then our panelists can move to this area here, and then we'll have the students come up. Uh, yeah, uh, principles of sustainability. I forgot last on Tuesday to remind you to come up with questions <laughs> for our panelists.